Hello people, this is going to be the ultimate tutorial in layers in Photoshop, all right? We're gonna go right in depth into layers and what they can do. It's a very, very confusing part of Photoshop, but they are one of the most powerful features that Photoshop has. And if you haven't grasped them, then you're really kind of holding yourself back in the full use of Photoshop. So we're gonna start off with the basics, all right? We're just gonna look at layers, how to move them around, how to resize them, twist them, and all of that kind of stuff. Then we're gonna move up into looking at layer styles. Then we're gonna look at using layers as smart objects. This is a really confusing area for people, so we're gonna look at using smart objects. We're then gonna look at layer masking. Again, something that is really powerful in Photoshop. And if you're using layer masking properly, you're definitely gonna improve your photography. And then we are gonna look at the power of using adjustment layers for your photography. Plus on top of this, I'm gonna give you all of the images that I use in this tutorial for free. They're in a link in the description of this video. You can download them and you can basically work along with me through this tutorial and that's really, really gonna help you grasp and understand the use of layers in Photoshop. So grab yourself a coffee or a tea or a beer if you wanna have a beer, um, download them pictures and strap yourself in for the ultimate tutorial in using layers in Photoshop. So let's start from the very basics. Let's look at what layers are, what they do, and whereabouts you find them in Photoshop. All right, now I'm gonna show you that using this illustration here. So here you can see a picture that's been separated into layers there via that graphic, and you can see what's called the layers panel, which is showing you them layers as they look in Photoshop, all right? So just, in its basic terms, layers allows you to work on one part of the image without affecting any other parts. You need to think of it like um, clear acetate sheets that you lay on top of one another. So a clear plastic sheet where you've got an image, you can see that image on the layer, and where there isn't an image or anything that you can see, it's clear and you can see through it to the layer underneath. So let's compare that with you know, another program like, let's just say Microsoft Word, all right? When you put two pictures on Microsoft Word, they kind of butt up against each other and one flicks above the other one and, and all sorts like that. Well, on Photoshop, layers, they, it doesn't do that on Photoshop. You know, layers allows you to drag one picture, put it on top of the other, put some text on top of that, move them around independently and so on, all right? So that, in its basic terms, is what layers are in Photoshop, all right? So let's now go into Photoshop and have a look. So here we are in Photoshop, and the first thing that you're obviously gonna need is your layers palette to hand, okay? Here is your layers palette. If you can't see it, all you do is you go Windows, you go down to Layers, and you click on Layers. Now obviously I've just clicked on it and it's disappeared, so I'm now gonna go back to Windows, and I'm gonna click on Layers, and there it is there, it pops up, and that's exactly what you want. Do not worry if your Photoshop workspace, which is this what we're looking at now, do not worry if that does not look exactly the same as what I'm looking at now. All you're gonna need for this tutorial, if you're following along with me, is your layers palette to hand here, and it's as simple as that. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to need to show you all about layers, or the basics of layers, is basically a background or a blank piece of paper. To do that, I'm gonna go File, New, I'm gonna click on the Print tab at the top here, and I'm quite simply going to select A4. If you're in the US, I, I think that's called standard letter, I'm not sure, but anyway, whatever your standard letter size is in the US, just click that, all right? So for us over in the UK, it's A4, select A4. All of this should look like this, it should be like this by default. If it's not, you just make sure that you're on a white background, and that's basically it really. I'm gonna click Create. So here we have a blank piece of paper for argument's sake. The first thing I wanna show you is how to create a new layer. So down the bottom here in the Layers palette, you have this symbol here, 
and that is your create a new layer icon. We're going to click on that and as you can see it creates a new layer. You can name your layers and I very much recommend that you name your layers as you go because it, you, eventually you could have you know tens or hundreds even of layers and you will get confused. So for this one, I'm just gonna double click on it and I'm just gonna type brush and press enter because what I'm gonna do is do some brushing on it, all right? So I'm gonna come over to my toolbox. I'm gonna to select the brush tool here and just for argument's sake, I'm gonna click on this symbol here which brings your foreground and background colors back to default. At the top here, I'm gonna turn my opacity to 100% and my flow to 100%, just so that I've got a nice strong brush, all right? And then quite simply, I am going to brush over my image like that. Now, what I've got here is them brush strokes on a separate layer, and here you can see it here. So I can click this eye symbol, and that will hide that layer. I can click this eye symbol, and that will bring back that layer. So there you go, a very simple explanation of layers so far. We've just created a background, we've added a new layer, and we've brushed on that layer, and it's separate, it's separate to the background, which means I can work on it independently. And of course, you can keep adding layers as many as you want to, all right? Now I'm gonna add a new layer by dragging and dropping a picture on top of this background. So I've got my pictures uh, nice and saved, and hopefully you have as well. If not, you could use any pictures, you don't have to use mine, they're, they're just there for ease of use, I suppose. Um, any picture will do the job. But here we go, I've got my pictures, and I'm just gonna literally drag from the folder and drop on top of this background and let go. So as you can see, it's now put the image on top of the background, and I've got the option to actually resize it now and twist it around now if I want to, all right? But for now, I'm gonna press Control and Z to bring it back straight, and I'm just gonna resize it to the size of this background. And that's because I'm gonna show you how to resize them a bit later, all right? But So just firstly understand that when you drag and drop pictures into a background, or another picture in fact, you're gonna create a new layer automatically, you can resize it and move it around, and then you click the tick at the top here, and that will tell Photoshop that you're happy, that you've got it in place, and you're ready to move forward. So let's come down to our layers palette again, and as you can see, now I've got two layers. One is called brush, and one is the actual image here. By default, Photoshop has created a smart object out of this layer. I will talk about that later on in this tutorial, all right? But for now, just understand that. That's that symbol there. It's a smart object. We'll talk about that a bit later on. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some text over the top. And again, automatically, when you add text to your document, to a photograph, to a background, whatever, Photoshop will create a new layer for you, all right? So I'm gonna come over to my toolbox. I'm gonna to select the text tool here. I'm gonna come over to my background and I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna quite simply type some text in. Let's type in T-S-O-P, simple as that, all right? And then I can move this text before I apply it. So if I can watch my cursor here, so currently it is working within the text so I can select the text and do what I want. But if I bring my cursor down, it creates an arrow shape and once it's created that arrow shape, it means I can move this around to wherever I want it to be. So that will do the job, and I'm just gonna click tick at the top here to apply it. So now what we've got is a bunch of layers, really, in our layers palette. Let's go through them. We've got the brush that I did, we've got an image, and we've got some text. So again, I can hide these independently from each other, and then I'm back to a blank screen, and of course, I can reveal them just like that. The next thing I can do is rearrange the layer order. So if I want that brush to be on the top, all I do is I click on the layer to select it, and then I click and hold again, and then I drag it right the way to the top. And now what we see is we've got the brush over the top of everything else. And again, I can do the same with the picture here, just select it, click and hold, drag it all the way to the top again, and again, that now becomes the top layer. So very easy to rearrange your layers within um, your layers palette here. The other thing is, if you did something wrong, it's also very easy to delete a layer. 
one of the benefits of using layers is that very fact, okay? So again, let's add a new layer by clicking the create new layer icon here. Double click on it, let's call it a uh, brush two, press enter. Let's grab the brush tool again and then let's brush it all over here like that. Okay, so for argument's sake, I've done some brushing and it's gone wrong, I don't like it. All I do is I grab this layer, click and hold, drag it into this little bin symbol at the bottom, release, and the layer disappears. So very easy to create new layers and very easy to delete them. Now what if I want to move layers around and resize them and all of that kind of stuff? Let's go and look at that now. So the first thing is if you want to move layers, you use the move tool, very, very simple. The move tool is right at the top of your toolbox there. And if you hover over the symbol, you can see that it brings up the name move tool, all right? So I'm gonna click on that. Now the next thing that's important is that you select the layer that you want to work on. This is where lots of confusion, lots of frustration, lots of people throwing things at their screen. This is where it comes from. You have to make sure that you are selected on the layer that you want to work on. Now, there is this little thing at the top here called auto select. I'm gonna tick it. I don't like using auto select. It absolutely does my head in. Now auto select is quite simply, uh, Photoshop will determine where your mouse clicks and then it will move the image that you've actually clicked on. So there I've clicked on the image and obviously moved it. Now I've clicked on the brush tool and I can obviously move it around. And then I'll come up to the top here, click on the text tool, TSOP, and I can move it around. Down the bottom here, you would have seen that Photoshop automatically selected the layers. Okay, so let's just do it again. Let's click on the image, it selects the image. Let's click on the brush tool, it selects that. And again, obviously click on the uh, text and it selects that. Now that all seems good and well, but the fact is that when you've got you know, 20 layers there and you're grouping layers, we're gonna look at that later on, things can get really confusing with auto select. So I tend to turn it off, but this will be a preference thing for you. But my advice is if you are starting in Photoshop, turn auto select off, slow yourself down a bit and select layers independently in your layers palette, just like what I'm gonna show you now, all right? So firstly, let's just show you a bit what I mean, okay? So let's take this text over the brush here. And now I can click, and now I've clicked in the text there, and as you can see, quite clearly, the brush has moved. Let's try and select the text, I can't select the text. Oh, right, I'm trying again, and right, you can clearly, there we go, now I've got it. Now you can clearly see what the problem is there with auto select, and it absolutely frustrates me, so I turn off auto select, and uh, I do it this way, okay? So we're gonna turn off of auto select and the simplest way and the best way when you're learning is to select them in your layers palette. Select the one that you want to work on. If you start there when you're learning, it's really gonna help, help it sink in and then as you become quicker and more advanced, then of course you can use more advanced tools. But for now when you're learning, select the one that you wanna work on. So let's select the brush layer make sure that we're on the move tool, and then I'm obviously moving the brush layer, okay? Let's select the text layer, come over here, and now obviously I'm working on the text tool, and so on and so forth, all right? So that's the recommended way for a beginner. As you, because once you've done it for like a few hours, actually you'll probably want to, you're probably going to want to be a bit quicker, and there is a quicker way, and it's to right click, okay? so. Firstly, let's move this TSOP over here. So effectively what I've got is three layers on top of each other. If I right click on my screen, it gives me the list of layers that are underneath my mouse, okay? So I can select the image, move the image around. If I right click, I can select the text, and now I'm moving on the text. And you can see it over in your layers palette, also selecting the layers. If I right click again, I can select the brush and now I'm working on the brush. Right click again, I can select TSOP again and I can move that over there and so on and so forth, all right? So that's my preferred way to work with selecting and moving layers around. Right click, select the layer. I don't like using auto select, 
that's going to be up to you long term but certainly as you're learning I would avoid it now what if I want to resize some layers some of you would have typed that text in and it would have been really tiny and some of you would have typed that text in and it would have been massive all right it just depends on what you was doing before you've done uh, this tutorial to resize any layer that's text images brush or whatever it's very easy you use what's called free transform to get to free transform you can go edit free transform or you can use the uh, the shortcut key which is control or command plus T. For now, I'm just going to select it here. And as you can see, it's put a free transform box around the layer that I was selected on, which is this text layer. And I can quite simply grab a corner and make it bigger or smaller. I can come over to the corner till it curves. And then I can click and hold and twist it around. I can click in the middle and move it around. Let's just move it up there for now. And if I hold down the shift key, and click on one of the edges, I can stretch and obscure it. And it's the same if I hold the shift key and click on you know, any of these points, to be honest, all right? So let's just leave it there for now. And you have to tell Photoshop when you have finished adjusting the layer. And you can do that quite simply by clicking the tick at the top, or you can press enter. Again, I like doing it the slow way as I'm teaching, and I recommend that learners do it the slow way as well. And the slow way is actually to click the tick at the top. The quicker you get, then you're just gonna hit the enter key, all right? So now we are gonna look at what's called layer styles. And it's quite simply what it says on the tin. It can add a style to a layer. It works particularly well with text. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do it on this TSOP text here. So the first thing I'm going to do, as a matter of fact, is I'm gonna hide this brush layer by clicking the eye symbol here. And up here in my navigator, I am going to zoom in so we can see the text a bit better. Maybe zoom out a little bit like that. Again, if you haven't got your navigator showing and you want it, you quite simply go to Windows and you make sure that navigator is ticked there. Right, to get your layer styles box up, you quite simply double click on the layer. So you double click on this layer here and it will bring up a layer style box. Let's just move it out of the way so we can see. Now, as you can see down here, we've got lots of different options to add a style to this layer. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna tick on bevel and emboss. And there you go. You can see it gives it a bit of a bevel. Uh, let's see what happens if I click contour not much at all as a matter of fact um, and let's come down to drop shadow here and tick on drop shadow and there you can see it gives a drop shadow now you can also adjust them effects uh, independently so for instance if i want to change the drop shadow i'm going to click on the drop shadow here it brings up the drop shadow options and i can change the opacity of that drop shadow let's just put it up to about 90 odd i can change the distance if i want to and let's just put it to about there. I can change the spread, you know, uh, lots of different things. I could change the color of the drop shadow if I want to, etc. And when you're happy with the style that you've added to your layer, you just click OK. So now if we come down to the layer, you can see that it's got effects here and it's got a little eye symbol next to each effect. So adding layer styles is actually non-destructive. And what that means is that you can always take it away and change it later on as long as you save your pictures as a photoshop file or, or a dot psd you can open up this file in a year's time and change that layer style very very easily let's just put that to the test if i tick on effects it gets rid of all of them effects if i click on the eye symbol again it reveals them and again i can hide the separate effects independently by clicking the eye symbol so that's layer styles it's very very simple you don't just have to add it to text you can add it to images you can add it to the brush tool you can add it to anything that you want to as a matter of fact um, it's as simple as that now let's look at layers as smart objects okay this one is very confusing but it's very very important and most of the time you would want to work on smart objects let's go and have a look at them 
So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Control and zero together, which will full screen the picture for me. I'm gonna hide this TSOP, which just leaves me with this image here. And like I said to you before, it is a smart object. It already is a smart object. So by default, when you drag and drop pictures into a background or another photograph, automatically uh, Photoshop will create a smart object for you. So a smart object or a layer as a smart object is a layer that preserves its original data, okay? So what that means is if your file is, let's go and have a look at this file for instance. Okay, so here it is here, here's the picture, let's just select it. So if your file is 7.56 megabytes, which is what this one here is, the layer is gonna preserve all of that original data. So you can add, take away, uh, put layer styles, do whatever you want to this smart object. And you can always go back and change it later on. It, you, you'll be creating non-destructive moves on a smart object. Plus, like I said, it holds its original data, which means that you can enlarge it and you can squash it down and it will keep the original pixels, if you like. And that's very good if you're dragging and dropping pictures in and resizing them, because obviously you want to keep as much of the data in that picture as possible. And that's what a smart object does. Let's go and put it to the test. So firstly, let's drag this picture into this background to create another picture. All right, I'm just gonna click the tick at the top. Let's move one up to the top here. And then obviously I've got to select the other layer here or right click and select it. And then I'm gonna drag that down to the bottom there like that. So now what I've got effectively is two pictures on my background that are exactly the same. They're both smart objects. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn one of these into a, a non-smart object, which basically is a normal picture, and then work on them both separately so that you can see the difference between a smart object and a non-smart object, okay? So, firstly, let's uh, grab this layer here, and because I don't want it to be confusing, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on it and drag it below this layer here, so that I know that this one is now the top one and this one is now the bottom one. It's just one of these things that I have to do when I'm working in layers and I recommend that you do it um, just to keep your head organized, all right? Now, let's grab this layer. Let's make sure we've selected it, sorry. I'm gonna press Control and T for free transform. I'm gonna make it smaller, all right? So I'm gonna make it to about that size. I'm gonna click the tick at the top. Now, currently, it is still a smart object it has still got all of the original file, uh, all of the original data, all the original pixels, etc. Now, I'm gonna turn it into a non-smart object, like a normal bitmap picture. And to do that, I right click on it and I go to rasterize layer. So now you can see that there is no smart object symbol on this layer. It is, for argument's sake, just a normal picture, okay? So now what I've done is, I've effectively removed the original file data and it is now the size of this background. So whatever amount of pixels there are from here to here, that is the size of this picture. Whereas this one at the top here, the smart object, is still got all of the original pixels that it had when I dragged it in there, okay? So now let's muck about with these two and see the difference between the two and the benefits of a smart object. So firstly, I'm gonna resize this. I'm gonna press Control and T to free transform. And I'm quite simply going to uh, resize it. That'll do, I think something like that. Okay. And I'm gonna click the tick at the top to tell Photoshop that I've finished resizing it and I'm happy to move on. And the next thing I'm gonna do is select the smart object version, which is this one here. I'm gonna press Control and T. And again, I'm gonna resize it to the same as the one underneath there like that, okay? So let's resize it to roughly about there. Click the tick at the top to apply it. So effectively, I've got the same picture, roughly the same size on top of each other. Now let's look at the difference between the two. I'm gonna zoom in with my navigator 
to 100%. And if you wanna view how you know sharp and crisp pictures are, which is what we're gonna do now, um, always make sure that you're zoomed into 100% and not further than 100%. If you go further than 100% here, the picture will look soft anyway, okay? So at 100%, if your picture is sharp and solid, then that means the picture is sharp and solid, okay? Now, currently on top, we've got the smart object. Let's move down here like that. And as you can see, everything in this picture is nice and crisp and sharp, and it's not pixelated. If I now hide this layer and reveal the one underneath, you can see that there is obviously a major difference. This one is pixelated, it's soft. Let's reveal the smart object again. Nice and crisp, let's hide it. And there is a soft pixelated image. So that's the first thing to obviously understand when you are using smart, object as, smart objects as layers. They retain obviously the original file size, which means you can stretch them and squash them down and move them around and they obviously won't pixelate as long as that original file has got enough data within it, okay? It's not just about resizing though, it's also about adding effects. So when you add effects to smart objects, you can change them effects very easily and they are non-destructive. Again, you could save the picture as, you can add an effect, save the picture as a PSD, a Photoshop file, open it up you know, a year later and change the effects that, that you've added. Let's just show you that now. So the first thing to do is actually press Control and zero to full screen it. I'm going to reveal this picture again, which is the smart object. I'm gonna press Control and T and we're just gonna resize it and move it back to the top where we was. Press enter or click the tick at the top. And then I'm gonna select this one and I'm gonna do the same thing. This is the non-smart object. I'm gonna press control and T and I'm gonna resize it to about there. Click the tick or press enter. And now of course what I've got is two pictures that are looking roughly the same on screen, which is perfect for what we want, right? So let's just say I wanna blur these pictures. If you blur a smart object, you can go back and change that effect later on in life. If you blur a non-smart object and you save the picture, once you open it up again, you can no longer change that blur. So let's have a look at that now. So here we're selected on the normal picture. I'm gonna go over to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And let's just drag that up to I don't know, something like that, about eight, nine or something. Click OK like that. So now obviously what I've got is a blurry picture. Let's now do the same to the smart object. Select the smart object, this layer here. Go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And it's already got the settings from before, 9.6 there. And I'm gonna click OK. Now the difference with these two layers, as you can see is one's got smart filters on and one hasn't, which means that I can go into this smart filters, I can hide that effect and bring it back, hide it and bring it back to see how I like the effect. I can double click on Gaussian blur, I can change the effect here so that it's like less blurry if you like, so let's go down to about three there, and I'm gonna click OK. And I can also add more effects on top of this uh, smart object and do the same thing again and again. So I could add lighting effects, I could add uh, a bit of grain or a bit of noise into it if I wanted to, etc., etc., and go back and change them effects now or later on once I've saved it and go back to it. With the non-smart object here, as you can see, I cannot, I cannot now change what I have just done unless I go back in my history palette or press Control and Z about 100 times um, to remove that effect and start again, okay? So they are the main differences between using smart objects and non-smart objects as layers in Photoshop there, all right? Let's shut all of this down and actually open up an example of where, we've, where I've used lots of different layers on an image, okay? Okay, so I'm just gonna press the X here to close this down. Obviously, I don't wanna save it, so I'm gonna click No there. 
And then I'm gonna open up my example here just by dragging and dropping it into the workspace area. Here is my example and down here in the layers palette, as you can see, are lots of different layers, all right? I'm gonna hover my uh, cursor in between the two layer groups here, click, I'm gonna drag it up so that we can see uh, more layers, all right? That'll do like that. And as you can see, we have tons of layers. We've got a background here, and then we've got images on top, we've got text, uh, we've got graphics, we've got lines and all sorts, lots and lots of different layers. All the layers are named to keep it all nice and neat and tidy for you, but there is something else that you can do to keep yourself even more tidy with layers, and that is group layers. And I would highly recommend that you group layers together to keep yourself all nice and tidy. And you can group them in any way that you want to. It just depends on obviously the picture that you're working on. So for instance, let's take this group of layers here and group them together, all right? So I've got the white box here. I've got supported by the School of Photography there, and I've got the TSOP logo there. If I click on one of the layers, I hold down the control key or the command key if you're on a Mac and click on the other layers, it selects all of them layers for me. Then you press control or command and G together and that will group the layers for you. Then of course, you can double click on the name here and you can rename the group. So for instance, I'm just gonna put in bottom and click enter. Then I can hide that whole group and obviously as you can see, it hides all of them layers. If I click this arrow, it opens up the group and then I've got all of these layers individual within that group. Keeps it all nice and neat for me. So there is the basics of layers and I know probably what you're thinking, that, that wasn't that basic, there was quite a lot of uh, in-depth stuff there but this is Photoshop for you. You know, you have to sit down and learn them. We've got plenty to go in this tutorial as well. But for now, if you need to grasp that a bit more, then obviously rewind the video and watch it again, because we are now gonna move on to layer masks, okay? So if you need to, rewind, do that bit again. If not, continue with me. I'm now going to go into Photoshop I'm gonna close all of this down. I'm not gonna save it. And then we're gonna open up the layers mask images that we're going to use for this task. So I'm gonna open up that one for now. And again, don't forget that you have got these pictures. If you wanna work along with me, it's in the description of this video, download them and you can work along with me with layer masks, okay? Also gonna put timestamps as well in the description as well, so you can flick backwards and forwards between different sections of this video. Right, let's just explain what layer masks are. Layer masks are a separate thing, if you like, that you put onto your layer, and it enables you to make that layer invisible. Now that is important. You don't erase the layer with a layer mask, you quite simply make it invisible or hide it, okay? You mask it out. Let's go and look at that on this picture. First thing I'm going to do is press Control and zero to full screen it. Now to add a layer mask, you quite simply click the add layer mask icon, which is in your layers palette here, okay? So firstly, I'm just going to drag this layers palette down to where it was before, roughly about there. And your layer mask icon is this one down here in the bottom of your layers palette. All you do is you click on that, and as you can see, it puts a mask next to the actual layer. Now the first thing to note, and the first thing that really confuses people is if you're working on the mask, you need to be working on the mask, right? Now that sounds really simple, but the amount of people that you see that are working on the image, which is this here, rather than the mask, which is this here, is, well, a lot I can tell you, and if you've been playing around with masks, I bet you've probably already done it, okay? I just wanna show you the difference. So if you are selected on the image, you will see this white box around the image. If you're selected on the mask, you see the white box around the mask, okay? So when you work on this mask, you quite simply add black to hide the layer, 
and white to reveal it. Simple as that really. Let's go and show you. I'm just gonna grab the brush tool here. You need to make sure that you've got black as your foreground color. So if you haven't got that, you click on this symbol here and it brings it back to the default, white and black. And you can click these arrows here to flick between white and black. So I've got a black brush. Uh, my opacity of the brush is on 100%. My flow is on 100%. Let's now just go over the picture. And there you go. It's got rid of the face, all right? It's not got rid of it. It's actually just hid the face. So that is what a mask does. It's as simple as that. A mask hides part of the image that you've painted on, or in fact, what you've added black onto. Let's come back to the image, flick back to white, and paint back over this so that it can come back to normal. All right, just like that. Because it's not just the brush tool that can add black and white. You can do it with a selection, you can do it with a gradient tool, you know, lots of different things. Anything that can add the color black is gonna work on your mask. So let's grab a selection this time. Let's uh, click on the lasso tools up here and select the normal lasso tool. And let's just draw around the eye like this. And then I'm gonna go edit, fill, and I'm gonna fill it with the color black. Make sure my opacity is 100%, click OK, and there you go. I'm gonna press Control and D to deselect. And as you can see, I've now hidden that layer using black within a selection. So you can do that with the gradient tool. You know, you could do it with anything, like I said, that, you, that can add black. If at any time you want to reset your layer mask, it's very easy. You just make sure that you're selected on the layer mask and you go edit, fill. The shortcut key is shift and five and you fill the whole layer with white. Click okay. And there you go, all right? So that will always bring the, uh, the layer mask back to white. The other thing that you can do if you get it totally wrong and you've had enough, you can delete the layer just by simply clicking on it and dragging it into the bin and it will bring up this box which asks you to apply the layer or delete it. In this case, we just wanna delete it, click delete and it's gone. And if I want another one, I quite simply click the layer mask icon down the bottom here and it brings a new one back for me. So there's a mask, add black to it and it will hide the image that it's attached to. Now you can also add black to the image in different opacities and in different strengths. Let's have a look at that. Let's come over here, click the brush tool again, make sure that I'm on black. So again, you click that arrow or you can hit the X key as a shortcut and that flicks from black to white. And let's come over to my image again and let's just paint a nice line like that. And there you go. I've got 100% opacity, 100% flow. It hides that whole section. It's as simple as that. The other thing that what you would have noticed is I've got a soft edge to the brush. If you want a soft or a hard edge to the brush, there's a few different ways of doing it. But as you're learning, a nice simple way is to right click. It brings up this box. You've got your hardness slider, so that was on zero. Let's go up to 100, press enter, and now let's do a line. And as you can see, it's got a nice sharp edge to it now. Now for a task like this, we're gonna need a soft brush. So quite simply, I'm gonna right click again, and I'm gonna take my hardness down to zero and press enter. If you wanna resize your brush, you can use the bracket keys on your keyboard and that will make it smaller and bigger, just like that. And again, there are other ways to resize your brush and to make your brush softer, but as you're learning, that's probably the best way to start. It will just help you really, It'll just get, help you get your head around brush sizes and brush softness. Now the next thing to look at here is the opacity. So if I'm on 100, what that basically means is that it's a solid, a solid black paintbrush, it's as simple as that. If I take it down to 50%, then what I've got is 50% transparency within that black paint. So now let's paint on top of the picture now. 
and there you go. You can see it's not as see-through as this brush stroke here. And that's really good when you're using masks because it helps you hide things and reveal things very, very softly, okay? Now the flow at the top here is like the flow of the ink, if you like. So if you've got a fountain pen, if you remember a fountain pen, <laughs> you, uh, with ink you push it down hard, the ink flows out quite fast. If you push your fountain pen down very softly, the ink flows out, well, very softly, not, not much ink comes out. And that's like the flow in Photoshop, all right? Now you will be experimenting over your Photoshop learning uh, career, if you like. You'll be experimenting with them too. Now I've got a whole tutorial on flow and opacity and using the brush tool. And it does take a bit of practice. I suggest that you go and watch that maybe after this to, um, to, to know, practice it some more. But for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just leave the flow on 100% and we're gonna practice using the opacity. It just makes it nice and simple and easy while you are learning, okay? Right, we're gonna now reset this mask and we're gonna add the other picture in and we're gonna do a little task, all right? Okay, so I'm just gonna make sure that I'm selected on the mask. I'm gonna click and hold. I'm gonna drag it into the bin and I'm gonna delete it. So here you go, for argument's sake, I've quite simply got the picture again. Now we are gonna practice using layer masks and I'm taking influence from a, a brilliant film called Pan's Labyrinth. I love the film and that's, what, that's where the influence came for this task. Obviously, if you've downloaded the pictures, you can do it with me, or if you wanna have your own fun, you can take your own pictures and do it, all right? So let's go into Photoshop and do it. Okay, so let's open up the folder where the pictures are, and then quite simply, it's this picture here that I want. I'm gonna drag, I'm gonna drop it on top of the other picture like that. Now, by default, it will snap into place, and I am just gonna click the tick at the top here to apply it. Now the first thing that I need to do is line these pictures up. Now that's really easy when you're using layers because you can change the opacity of the layer. And you do that quite simply by coming down to opacity here in the layers palette, clicking on this arrow and pulling it down like that to about roughly 50%. And then I'm gonna make sure I'm on the move tool up the top here and I'm basically going to move and get these no, this nose lined up, okay? What I'm gonna do is press Control and the plus key to zoom in and get it properly lined up just like that. Then I'm gonna press Control and zero to zoom back out again to show you. So as you can see, now it's overlaid very nicely and I'm gonna bring the opacity of this layer back to 100%. Now don't worry about all of this where it's not lined up here, we'll just crop it at the end. So now I need to add a mask to this image because effectively all I'm gonna do is hide these areas of the hand to reveal the eye underneath. Simple as that really. So let's come down to the add layer mask icon here and click on it. Make sure that the mask is selected obviously. Come over to the brush tool, make sure I've got black as my color selected Take the opacity down, yeah, that'll do. Right click on the screen, make sure your hardness is down to zero. Press enter, and then quite simply, paint over the hands where you want the eyes to shine through. It's as simple as that, really. Now I'm gonna press the control and the plus key to zoom in, that's command if you're on a Mac. Let's zoom out a little bit. That will help me refine it a little bit further. Now. The beauty of this uh, task is that your hand, the palm of your hand, indents. The eye socket also indents. So if you can kind of match them shadows up, you've kind of won, all right? So that's what I'm gonna try and do. I'm gonna bring these shadows of the eye socket into the hand so that they match up as best as I can, okay? Now when you get to that point, you might wanna refine it. Now don't forget all you've done is hide the image. You haven't uh, erased it, you've hid it. So if I now flick back to the color white by clicking these arrows here or quite simply pressing the X, I can then come back to the image, I can paint on it again 
which will reveal the, the hand image here and give me a bit more control like that so it looks a little bit better. So again, I can use my arrow keys and there you go. Let's just take a little bit back over here. That will do and I think that a little bit more over here actually. Press the X key and bring that back a little bit. There we go. Okay, you get the point. We can refine that as much as we want to, but that's about right. I'm gonna press Control and zero to full screen it again. I'm gonna grab the crop tool, which is over in your toolbox, and I'm gonna drag the top down like that. The bottom up like this, I'm gonna pull these in, and I'm gonna click the tick to apply it. Press Control and zero to full screen it. And there you go, it's as simple as that. You know, it's a really, really simple task to do. If you don't know about the film Pan's Labyrinth and there's a monster in there basically and his eyes are in his hands, um, that's where it comes from. Fantastic film, go and watch it, right? Now, the next thing that we're going to look at is adjustment layers. Now, adjustment layers are a powerful, powerful tool in Photoshop and they will make your photography 10 times better, I absolutely guarantee it. So we are gonna shut all of this down and we're gonna look at adjustment layers in a second. But before I do, if you are interested in learning Photoshop properly and in depth and learning much, much more than what we've done here, then we have got a whole online course in Photoshop. It's five star rated, it's structured by a professional, fully qualified teacher and it will take the beginner to an absolute advanced level in no time, I can absolutely promise you. So if you are interested in learning Photoshop properly, and I mean properly, not just YouTube video properly, I mean really properly, then come over and see us over at the schoolofphotography.com where we will teach you Photoshop so you learn it, retain it, improve your photography now and forever. Right, let's now go and look at using adjustment layer masks to really improve your photography. So the first thing to do is to shut all of this down. I don't want to save it. And we're gonna open up the picture that we're going to use for the adjustment layer task, okay? So I'm just gonna drag and drop that and open it up here like this. Now, again, you have got this picture to work on link in the description, download it, you can work along with me. So firstly, let's con press Control and zero to full screen it. I'm gonna click the move tool at the top here to get rid of the uh, crop box. And I'm gonna open up this layers group here and reveal all of these adjustment layers, okay? So if I hide this group, that's the normal picture. That's the raw file, if you like. That's the normal raw file. And then I have added into this picture all of these adjustment layers here. So let's go through them one by one quickly. Um, the first one was this bright background to darken this. And I put a green curve in. I'm gonna explain all of this in a minute. Then I put an RGB curve in, and then I put a black and white adjustment layer over the top. Let's hide that. That's normal. Let's bring it back, and that is with all of them adjustment layers. And like I said to you uh, just at the start here, it is the power of adjustment layers that I want to teach you here because they are fantastic. They can transform your photography, you know, 10 times, okay? Um, let's, first of all, describe what an adjustment layer is. Basically, it's a layer that you put over the top of your picture which will adjust it, okay? I know it sounds simple, but for instance, if you put a black and white adjustment layer above your normal layer, your normal picture, it will turn it black and white, and it will turn every layer underneath it black and white at all. Now, the beauty of using adjustment layers is that you can then adjust that black and white effect. So you can turn a picture black and white normally, you can just desaturate it. But if you use a black and white adjustment layer or a huge saturation adjustment layer, um, you can control that black and whiteness, okay? You can make it uh, more or less stronger, you can change the effect of it, you can mask sections off, 
and all things like that. So they, they really give you a lot of control over the adjustments of your image. And Photoshop, that's, that's one of its strengths is these adjustment layers. Let's go and physically have a look at that now. Okay, so firstly, let's uh, close this group down and let's hide it. Then I'm gonna select the original picture here. And, and that's quite important actually. You, the adjustment layer will go above whatever layer that you are selected on. So if I was selected here, for instance, and add in an adjustment layer, it will go above that group. Well, I don't want that to happen. I want it to just go above this picture. So I need to select that. And then to add an adjustment layer, you choose the adjustment layer icon down the bottom in your layers palette here. You click on it and there's lots of different versions of adjustment layers. Now, we're not gonna have time to go through them all in this video. It is in the Photoshop course, um, but we will go through some really cool ones right now. Firstly, let's just show you what I mean about adjustment layers. So if I added that black and white adjustment layer here, as you can see, it's added it above this layer and it's turned my whole picture black and white. Up the top here in the properties box of your black and white adjustment layer, it gives you lots of different options to change that black and white effect. So for instance, I could add a blue filter effect or I can go maximum black. Or if I really want to, I can adjust them, you know, independently via these sliders, all right? And once you've got that black and white effect that you want, you can also tone it down using the opacity of the layer itself by clicking on this arrow here. So I can take it down. So for instance, I can add a 20% black and white or a 50% black and white, etc. Let's bring it right the way back up to 100. And the other thing that you can do with an adjustment layer is work on the mask like we've just looked at. So I can select the mask here. I can grab the brush tool, make sure that I'm on black so that I can hide the effect. Uh, so a mask can be on a picture and you're hiding that picture, but a mask can also be on an effect, like a black and white effect, and you can mask that effect instead. So. Let's just, for argument's sake, I'm gonna grab the opacity right and put it right up to 100, and then I'm gonna just paint over the model, all right? So, you know, you can have a color model and a black and white background, and that's just as quick as I'm gonna go for now, okay? You get the point that I'm trying to make. So, there is an adjustment layer, and another good thing is that you could save this picture, come back to it a week later, and think, mm, I don't like that effect, and then you can change and adjust it again. Um, you know, and that is the beauty of adjustment layers. Right, so that was just to show you, I don't actually want it, so I'm gonna grab the uh, black and white adjustment layer and I'm gonna drag it into the bin. And I'm gonna click the arrows on the properties box here just to hide it to keep my screen nice and neat. So the first thing that I want to do is I wanna darken down this strip here, this strip of light in the background. It's just a bit too bright going through the frame. Um, so I wanna darken it down. So you can use, there's actually a few different um, adjustment layers that you can use, but there is one quite simply called brightness and contrast. So that's the one we're going to use, okay? So to add a brightness and contrast adjustment layer, we're gonna click the adjustment layer icon here, and we're gonna go up to brightness and contrast here. If I come up to the brightness slider, I can bring it right the way down like that. And as you can see, it is darkening that strip in the background. So let's put it to about there. So you probably noticed that it's darkened that strip of light down, but it's also darkened everything else down as well. Well, this is where you can use a mask, can't you? Um, so that you only use this effect on that strip of light in the background. So to do that, I am going to use the quick selection tool. Over the years, Photoshop has got really, really good with their quick selection tool. So it's the quickest and the best way to do it now. So I'm gonna come back over to my screen here. I'm gonna hide this properties box. I'm gonna come over to my toolbox. I'm gonna to click and hold on this tool here. 
and it brings up my selection tools, okay? So I want the quick selection tool here. Come down to the screen, that brush size is probably okay, but again, if you need a bigger or smaller brush, you can just use the bracket keys and it will make it bigger and smaller, all right? So quite simply, I'm gonna click in this bright area and, and as you can see, Photoshop does a great job at stopping where it should stop. And there we go. And there you go. Uh, I told you Photoshop was good at it and <laughs> there you go. You can see it's very, very good at it, all right? The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna soften the edges of this selection and to do that, I'm gonna click Select and Mask at the top here. I'm gonna grab my feather slider and drag it across until I get a nice soft edge on that red there. You can see that there like that. If you're not seeing red as your mask here, up the top where it says View, you can click on this drop down arrow and you can select Overlay, okay? Now down the bottom here, it gives you an option to output this too. So I can output it back to the selection or I can output it to the layer mask. And that's what I wanna do. I wanna output this softened selection that I've just made to a layer mask. So I'm gonna click on layer mask. I'm gonna click OK. And there you go. It has masked off that brightness and contrast adjustment from the rest of the image and kept it on that bright strip. Now that obviously we're going into other things like select a mask now. Again, that's all covered in the uh, Photoshop course, but just for now, you can see if I hide that layer, it's bright as it originally was. And if I reveal it, it's darkened down that strip very, very nicely for me. Now the next adjustment that I wanna to make to this image is, I wanna make uh, this, these lights greener. So this is an old car park, all right? Now they've, they've got them strip lights and them strip lights have got that horrible green light. Well, it didn't pick it up in this particular picture, but I can add it in in post-processing, i.e. Photoshop. So what I'm gonna try and do is put some greens into the highlights here and complement them greens with some magentas, all right? To do that, the best uh, adjustment layer, I think, is a curves adjustment layer. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna come down to my adjustment layer icon here, click on it, and I'm gonna select curves. If you wanna know about curves in Photoshop, I've got a whole tutorial on that as well. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna briefly explain what it is. Curves controls highlights and shadows. You can do it across the whole image or you can select certain colors and boost the highlights within certain colors, all right? And that's what we're gonna do now. So from this drop down box, I'm gonna select green. And like I said, I'm gonna add greens into the highlights, okay? So just watch these lights here. If I push that up, you can see that it's adding greens into it, all right? It's adding greens across the whole picture as well. But all I do is I grab the curve here, bring it down, and it removes the greens from the shadows. So effectively, I have now got greens in the highlights. And obviously I can push that right up if I want to. I won't, but I could do. So nice lot of greens there in the highlights. And by pulling this down, you're adding like magenta into the shadows and you know it looks quite cool as a matter of fact so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to bring that down like that and that will do for now i'm going to click the arrow here to get rid of the properties box keep my screen nice and neat the next thing that i'm going to do is add another curves adjustment layer but this time i am going to apply it across the whole image here yeah, the rgb i'll show you what i mean so i'm going to click on this adjustment layer icon, I'm gonna select curves, and here I've got RGB. So let's click on this drop down arrow. So like you know, I can select the reds, the greens, or the blues, or I can select all the colors within my scene. And that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna put a nice S curve into this picture, which will boost the contrast, but I'm also gonna pull up this curve here which will give me a matte finish. So you can see that there. 
It's like that Instagram look that you get with them filters. But if I pull this curve up, in the blacks, it's now giving me that matte gray look. And for this picture, actually, I'm gonna come down here, maybe not that much in the highlights and, and a bit more in the shadows there like that, that's it. And for this picture, I think it will suit it, you know? It will give it that murky kind of look. So that'll do for that adjustment layer. I'm gonna hide that. And again, let's come back to the beauty of adjustment layers is I don't have to be too fiddly now because I can add these adjustment layers in and then come back to it tomorrow or come back to it next week with fresh eyes and then you can start refining it further. So, you know, again, another beautiful thing with adjustment layers. And the next adjustment layer that I'm going to use is a black and white adjustment layer. Because at the moment I think uh, the colors are nice, but they're a bit too punchy. If I had a black and white adjustment layer, change the opacity of that adjustment layer, it will mute the whole thing for me. So I'm gonna click on the adjustment layer icon down the bottom here, go to black and white, and I think I'll just leave it on its default actually. To be, to be honest with you, uh, Photoshop's black and white adjustment layer on default works pretty much most of the time. So I'm gonna click the arrows here to get rid of that. Come down to the opacity slider, drag it down, and I'm thinking something about there. Let's hide that layer and bring it back. Yeah, you see it just, it's very slight, very, very slight, but it, it's them slight adjustments which makes a photo you know, normal to being really good. And that slight adjustment is, is really enhancing this feeling of being an, a murky, you know, dark, horrible car park. So now let's group all of these layers. So I'm gonna come down to the bottom layer. I'm gonna hold down the shift key. I'm gonna click on it. And that selects all the layers in between there. Press Control and G to group the layer. Double click on it. And this time we'll call it version three, okay? Press enter. And of course, you can keep going like that. You can add version four, version five, version six, etc. And again, it's the beauty of using adjustment layers. So let's hide and reveal some of these effects. So let's hide that, that's the original picture. Let's bring it back, that's literally what I've just shown you just then. So let's hide that and let's go up to version one here. And that's what I did before. And then I've got version two. So let's reveal that and hide it, reveal it and hide it. So effectively what I've created here is one kind of muted murky look and then another quite cool and punchy kind of look. So let's have a look at the difference. So that's the one that I created before. And then that's the look I created in version two. So you can see that with the first original picture, which is this here, I've got two totally different effects using just adjustment layers. Now, I know that this is a long tutorial and if I'm gonna be honest, there is still more things there in layers that I haven't shown you. But I do hope that this tutorial is that much in depth that it's gonna really help you out because there's no point flicking all over the internet, you know, picking up this, that, and the other. I've made this tutorial because it is in depth. You know, it's the ultimate tutorial on layers in Photoshop. And all you need to do is go back in the video, download them pictures, and go through it again a couple of times, and you're gonna get a really good understanding of layers in Photoshop. If you do, and you have, then please help us out. You've gotta like the video. You've gotta give us a comment. Tell me what you think in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Share this with your friends, let them benefit from it, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and you have to hit that bell button. If you don't hit that bell button, you won't know about uh, future videos that we're going to release. Don't forget also to come over to the schooloffotography.com, check out our online Photoshop course and other courses, and you can join our lovely online learning community if you want to. Thanks for watching, and remember, learn more at the School of Photography.